Hi everyone. Um, welcome to Cooking with Me Super Moon again. Uh, it's been some time that I haven't done any cooking video. I think it's about three weeks now. Um, because I was just too busy with my study um, that I'm doing a nutritional therapy practitioner course. Um, this course is um, kind of um, really uh, have a lot of work, a lot of reading to do. And so, yeah, I would just bury my head in the books and the computer. Now I decided I'm going to do a cooking video because I miss it. And um, yeah, and then a few friends asked me that uh, they would like to, you know, have this uh, dumpling uh, recipe put up. So I say, okay, I was just gonna do that for, um, for everybody else as well. So yeah, so I will show you how to make dumpling uh, without grain and uh, gluten-free as well. It's healthy, it's autoimmune recipe. Alrighty, let's follow me. So now let me show you the ingredients that we are going to use to make dumpling today. Um, these are main ingredients every ingredient we have here I got um, arrowroot flour one cup water chestnut flour one cup water chestnut flour you can purchase from Amazon online store or you can purchase on your um, local uh, grocery especially um, in Asian or Indian grocery they would have this water chestnut flour and I got one cup of filter water just uh, to to make the flour and then um, for the filling I got um, medium size of a carrot uh, already sliced up we're going to blend it up with the, uh, with the cabbage that I sliced up as well this is one cup it's like uh, you know one fourth of um, cabbage this size of my hand and then um, one third of the cup of macadamia nuts I love macadamia nuts and this recipe is gonna be vegetarian so um, macadamia nut will keep that crunchy you know uh, taste and flavor and um, well t tasty I love um, macadamia nuts it just flavor up um, your food so much and here I got brown mushroom that I already sliced up and saute a little bit because mushroom just take a little bit um, more to cook so I um, I did that first before I blend uh, them with all other ingredients and then I have one clove of garlic and uh, a slice about five to six seeds of um, uh, white pepper so I already crushed that up a little bit then I am going to add the garlic in there and then crush that up as well but if you have grinder or blender you can uh, use your glider then I'm going to uh, put this macadamia nut as well in my mortar and then I will crush that up um, then uh, yeah just uh, for people who got you know reflux um, you might want to avoid garlic uh, initially because um, as far as I know from my own experience as well that uh, garlic can uh, trigger reflux uh, so if you cannot eat garlic you can replace it with uh, ginger uh, which is a good uh, alternative yeah so and then um, I also got some onion which is dry onion I got from Costco I will use this uh, probably about only a teaspoon and then um, a teaspoon of um, Malian salt pink salt that's my favorite because it's full of uh, minerals in this salt it's uh, supposed to be good for your health okay so I will crush this um, macadamia nuts and the uh, garlic and pepper together then I will be back so here I am um, 
got crushed uh, garlic and um, mancaramia nut and also um, pepper together then I'll go ahead and uh, put all these um, vegetable like carrots and um, cabbage and also mushroom in the um, blender I use ace blades because um, I don't want it to be so finely blend so I'll just do roughly um, blend um, so um, once I blend that then I will um, saute with um, you know a little bit of um, oil or you can do it without oil you can use um, kia you can use uh, um, you know kia is a purified butter or you can use olive oil for um, for the saute or for stir fried alrighty so I will go and blend this vegetable and then I'll be back so um, I finished blending the vegetable together so they turn out like this and um, we only got one cup after blend so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to saute the um, crushed macadamia nuts um, garlic and pepper and vegetable together using um, avocado oil we're just gonna do it for like about one two minutes um, the reason I'm doing that because I want to um, bring out the aroma um, you don't have to sort it, you can just mix them together and go ahead and you know use that mix to fill your dumpling but because I like my food to be aromatic so when you uh, saute or fry um, garlic and onion with a, a little bit or a little bit for a short time they give that aroma um, to your food so it's kind of you know make it more enticing so yeah so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm going to heat up the pan on the high heat. And then I'll add um, probably just about a teaspoon of oil, not much. Because macadamia, it's already quite oily. So um, just one teaspoon. You know, just to keep that um, the heat in uh, when you fry the onion and the garlic, they're gonna give that aroma. Um, the oil just bring that out very nicely for us. Okay, so that looks like it's heat up, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and add some onion. So I said I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon. Right, so that's like a one third, maybe a bit more. See, if you have reflux, like I said earlier, garlic and onion, they are trigger. Um, if you have severe, then it's better you skip those um, food items until you treat it and you feel better, then you can add them back because this. Um, Food items actually quite, you know, nutritious and uh, they're actually good for your health. But sometimes when you have that, you know, your gut is not well, you are probably, uh, it's better off to avoid it for some time. But once you treat it, then you can add them back slowly. But if you have my symptom of the flux, you can uh, uh, eat them a little bit. I found very helpful for me is that after um, uh, having meal or before having meal, I take um, psyllium husk with a glass of water that help um, to settle reflux. But my um, symptom right now is not so severe, so I can just yeah I can add that, uh, but I don't add too much. Um, yeah, like you see, uh, if you don't have any reflux symptom, you can just go ahead and put maybe one tablespoon, that's fine too. Because onions really bring up the flavor in your food as well. 
because it gave that sweetness. And believe it or not, it's also very good for uh, people who got candida. Um, yeah, that's what I learned. Yeah, then now it's bring out the aroma. Um, I'm just gonna go and add this um, blend vegetable in there. You still have some carrot junk, which is fine. Um, when you saute that, about one or two minutes, then it's gonna get soft. And then I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of Himalayan salt, just to, just for taste. This smells really good. Look like um, the cabbage and the carrots get soft a little bit. So I will reduce the frame. like our um, vegetables cook so I was just gonna turn the frame off and let the um, vegetable cool down then um, we're going to while the vegetable is cooling down the vegetable cooling down I will um, show you how to mix up the, the flour that's our next step here we're going to mix up the flour to make flour what I do I will add um, about half a cup of water first and see how that goes um, you can always add water in your um, when you mix flour um, because if you add more at once at all at once and it becomes so wet then it's a bit hard to fix like you have to add more um, more flour, more ingredients, so you just lost that portion of your <laughs> recipe. So this is the way I do it. And um, I will add arrowroot flour into this water and trying to mix it, like make it absorb in the water uh, before I heat it up. Because when you uh, heat up, the water become hot and um, you add the uh, arrowroot flour it become lumpy um, then it's um yeah it's not easy to um to make or make it you know, you know the, the dough not consistent not consistency so now i'm going to on the heat into and um, on the low heat okay so we'll do the low heat on yes or maybe just up a little bit not too low just for it to cook faster so what I add in here um, about half a cup of water and then probably about two tablespoons of um, arrowroot flour and then I will mix until um, these um, the liquid turn into you know that a little bit clear 
color before I add um, the uh, water chestnut flour. gonna require a little bit of patience um, yeah otherwise uh, it will not turn out as nice mm. now you can see that it's getting thicker 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 I mean the pan is heating up so the glass become a bit clear now it will be you know it will act like a glue um, to bind these um, um, water chestnut flour so I will go ahead and add the water chestnut flour in there the whole thing and then mix then we will reduce to low very low so you can see that it's dry then you go ahead and add some water bit by bit not at once You know um, how some people say that oh I buy that I used your recipe but it doesn't turn out well like yours you know some flour doesn't really um, they actually not the same although they said it's a root flour um, they're different brand I don't know why they just don't come out the same so this is the best way to do it so um, add water slowly so just to you know make sure that it works so now it's quite sticky so what I will do I will go ahead and use my hand but before I do that I um, will just turn the frame off. Okay. So it look like the fly is really soft. It's quite hot. Just be careful, don't put your whole fingers in there. Just use your fingertip or use something else if you are comfortable with it. So like you see the, the flour is quite soft now and so um, the heat reduced a little bit so I can just go ahead and use my hand um, without worrying of getting hurt and see it turned out that we only use like not the whole um, cup of water so this water I can uh, keep it to for um, for making the dumpling uh, form the dumpling later on um, this is quite soft and I will go and add some more um, arrowroot flour to make it more sticky and chewy for our dumpling so I will add this and uh, just knead that with my hand Some leftover of um, arrowroot flour, we will use um, that for, you know, rolling out the the dough, neck sheets. 
which I will show you later. Look like this though is really good. It's soft. Um, I just make sure I get everything out of this. I don't want to waste this, um, you know, this flour. Just make sure you get everything out. Now I'm just going to roll this and make sheets, um, make into our dumpling um, plate or circle, whichever you call it, or base, okay? So here we get our um, dough ready. I am going to um, sprinkle this um, arrow flour all over the board. So it doesn't stick. I will divide this into two. We'll just handle small amount first. I find that it's easier to navigate. So what I do. Just roll that out. So you want to do as thin as you can. Um, but if um, you can't, that's fine. It's just that uh, if it's too thick, it'll be, you know, chewy. So that's quite thin. I'll see if I can do more. Yeah, that's good. Um, so I will use that bowl that I use for the you know, for vegetable, I'll just use that to press down. It works as well or if you have cookie cutter or, you know, you can use that as well. I have, but they seem like they're um, too big or too small. So I find this size is perfect. So I use the bowl instead, which is good. Gonna be improvised. Um, so it's look like we only got four of the sheets for this. So there it is. So we're just gonna keep this aside until we finish all the um, all the dough. So I keep that aside. So here the um, dough that I made into sheets, two round plates for the dumpling. So I think I got about uh, 15 of them from that one one cup of um, uh, water chestnut flour and about half a cup or three, three fourths of um, arrowroot flour. So now I'm going to show you how to make the dumpling.
like put the filling and then make into a dumpling shape let's go so why i'm making dumpling i will just heat up the water here uh, on my steamer and let it boil um, i will use the i will steam my dumpling today using this um, so what i do i will just um, make the dumpling and then put here and then put into the steamer yes yeah, so the tip um that i found out is that uh, you gotta do this um when the um dough is still warm if you know if you leave it for too long and cool down then uh it's become like it breaks you know very easily so um what I do, I will just try to uh, finish that off very quickly. And it's easy to handle because it's soft and everything. Um, like that. So you just squeeze it. And then uh, put it down, push a little bit like that see the shape like this if you find it hard to do this shape you can also um, you know just put it flat like that and then um, put that in the middle fold that into half and just press the edge and so you get that you get that shape you know just half circle or if you are not happy with just um you know fold like that whichever way you want Just make sure that you touch water. Just close up the edge properly. So that's another shape you get. So here we are making another one. Just close that up. So what I'm saying is that um, when the um, dough is still warm, it's easier to handle. Um, when it's cold, it's tend to break, and so yeah, I will um, encourage you to you know do like small amount uh, at a time, like you you um, cut dough into many portion and then wrap it up with um, with the tail uh, with the um, container or put in container or wrap it up with the uh, plastic ziplock bag whatever that you um you have that it's convenient so once you um yeah just keep the dough warm and moist so that um, it doesn't break so um that's what it looked like but it's soft and nice so it's easier to do it there's a little bit of hole but that's fine when it's cooked this thing says it's gonna come out yeah and then we'll keep going with another one so like this um portion i'm making uh we'll get about 10 to 12 dumpling all together these dumplings are quite big um so Probably one person if you don't eat a lot, like myself. Four, um, it's enough for me, you know, to feel full. So, um, so I'll just start this one from the middle and out to the edge, like that. So this different way of doing it. And then, just like that in 
uh, touch the water again because it doesn't close for you then you need to touch so just cut up different design you know rather than the, so you see the different so when it breaks you just touch the water and press that in like that um like this one it's just like from left to right this one from middle out so you see the different okay now there's two more to go i'm just gonna finish that off and then i will show you how to um other way that i cook my dumpling i will steam it this time um, so you see how that's turned out so i do from the middle like that Like I said, the dough, it's still um, nice and warm, so it's easier to handle. Although it breaks a little bit, but that's okay. Um, with the water, just smooth it up. And then make sure you squeeze that close. If it doesn't close, touch the water. Wet it up, and then close. See that? That's quite easy, isn't it? Now the last one. Even though I wet the edge, by the time I close, you know, come to closing it, um, it dry up. <laughs> Imagine. So this is okay. I find it started from the middle. It's much easier. So I'm just going to do from the middle out, close that, close, fold, close, squeeze, then squeeze. Then I will do this side, me doing So after you uh, finish your uh, making dumpling, you just put the baking paper and then I cut this in a hole in the, in the middle so that the steam come through. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I just want to make sure that that um, it's, um, it's heat up, it's cooked properly. So I'll just put that in. dumpling that I already made so these steamer is a bit small probably I'll get about three four of them in here so I'll make different shapes so this is a quite big dumpling um, so I will just put that to seam I have put the, um, the dumpling in the steamer so that's steaming so when it's, uh, when it's cooked it's gonna turn pink and uh, the dough will turn clear a little bit clear so then we know that it's cooked so what I do I just put them like scatter like that all around and then I'll add water heat's already on I'll just increase it to boil it and then I will close this up And we'll uh, wait until it's cooked. Um, the water will dry up at one point, and then uh, if it's not cooked, then you need to add more water. And 
um, yeah, and le leave it until it's cooked. So you see that's boiling up. I'll just close that. So here guys, the um, dumpling after cook on the paint. So like I showed you earlier, um, this is how it turned out. It just, um, you know, um, after cook, you just let it cool down a little bit. Otherwise it stick. So this is how it stick to the paint at the bottom. So it brown and the dumpling is this cook. It turned into this brown pink color so that's what it is now i'm going to show you the one that i steam this one that i steam i find that um the one that i steam it's more you know it's softer it's soft and the bottom doesn't you know it's not burned so um what i do um, because I cannot eat all this at once. So what I'll do, I will just um, mold those from the one that I, I um, cook in the pan into the steamer and then just keep um, them warm in here in the steamer. So um, when you're going to eat, they taste soft and then um, nicer. In my opinion, the... Um, the one from the steamer tastes tastes better, like softer. So that's a video about cooking dumpling, um, grain free, gluten free, and vegetarian dumpling. So I hope you like this video, and uh, please give it a try and uh, give me some comments if you try and uh, if you like it, share with your friends and family. That will be totally appreciated. Thank you so much and wish you all have a good day.